almost every modern 3D printer suffers from the same issue. But few understand where it comes from or how to get rid of it. Until now. I've been watching a lot of 3D printer reviews lately for the Snapmaker E1 and the Bamboo P2S, amongst others. And something stood out to me. Let's see if you can spot it. What you can definitely notice on the P2S are VFAs. I noticed subtle surface patterns on the X direction faces, similar to VFAs. Like on so many other printers, VFA are quite prominent on the P2S as well. But we can see some VFAs on the side wall. Do you see what I'm seeing? Severe VFAs, vertical fine artifacts. Modern 3D printers do everything short of cooking us breakfast. But yet we still have this major issue affecting the majority of machines. One of the worst offenders is Prusa with their Core 1. I grilled them pretty hard in my review for just how bad the VFAs were. They were present not just on glossy prints, but on matte ones too. Well, it seems like they've taken this feedback seriously because they've been working hard behind the scenes to resolve it. Supposedly through a combination of firmware, software, and hardware tweaks, VFAs are gone once and for all. But is this too good to be true? And can what they learned be applied to other printers too? Let's find out. But before we go any further, it will help if you have a basic understanding of what VFAs are and where they come from. Vertical fine artifacts are a type of surface imperfection on our 3D prints. They're aligned vertically and distributed horizontally, often in a repeated or periodic pattern. These have two distinct sources and many confounding factors, all of which overlap, so it can be hard to distinguish the exact root cause. Type 1 VFAs, as I'll call them, originate with the stepper motors. A stepper motor consists of a permanent magnet called a rotor, which is what the shaft is attached to, and an electromagnet, a series of current carrying coils, called the stator. The stator's magnetic field interacts with the rotor's field to produce torque, and that torque depends on the angle between them. In order to create rotation, we adjust the current in the coils, which changes the strength and direction of the field. But the stepper drivers aren't capable of varying the current smoothly. It's increased or decreased in steps. And because the transition isn't smooth, the magnetic field doesn't rotate continuously, and that causes small fluctuations in the motor's output torque. When the torque momentarily dips, the motor can't hold its exact angle perfectly. The shaft lags behind. Then, when the torque peaks again, it catches up or even overshoots a little. This phenomenon is called torque ripple, and it introduces vibrations in the motor. So the electrical oscillation creates a mechanical vibration which can be amplified if it occurs near the motor's resonant frequency. The vibrations of the motor manifest as rotational oscillations of the pulley, which in turn cause the linear movements of the belt, causing the instantaneous velocity of the printhead to change ever so slightly. Sometimes it moves slightly faster, and sometimes it moves slightly slower. So torque ripple yields velocity variations. The printer's firmware doesn't account for this. The motion planner just assumes constant velocity, and extrudes at a constant rate. So when the velocity fluctuates, the extrusion width does too, microscopically. For a printer with core XY kinematics like these, two motors work together to achieve the motion. A diagonal move only requires one motor to rotate. A horizontal move, on the other hand, requires both. The rates and directions of rotation determine how the oscillations from the two motors combine. Sometimes they add and sometimes they cancel. That's why type 1 VFAs can be more or less prominent on different surfaces of the same part. In most cases, slower speeds are actually worse because they put the motors in the range of their resonant frequencies, which seems a little bit counterintuitive. Slower printing, worse quality. And the structural profiles on the Prusa Core 1 show this especially. The VFAs are really bad. On the other hand, higher print speeds can result in more vibration of the printer itself, which manifests as ringing or ghosting artifacts, especially at sharp corners. This phenomenon has a similar source as the Type 1 VFAs, mechanical vibrations, but in that case, it's the print head that's resonating, not the motors. These vibrations can be mitigated using firmware tricks like input shape. Worth noting is that there's also a direct correlation between the prominence of VFAs and the selection of motors and stepper drivers. Prusa uses 0.9 degree steppers as opposed to the usual 1.8s. The finer step resolution results in smoother motion and less vibration. They advertise these as being VFA free, but we still see significant VFAs on the core one, so they must be coming from a different source. This is what I call type 
two VFAs. These can be identified by the fact that they perfectly match the pitch of the belts. In most cases, a spacing of two millimeters. When a tooth belt wraps around a pulley, it doesn't form a perfect circle. It forms a polygon path, made up of small straight segments between the points where the teeth contact the pulley. As a result, the effective radius of contact between the belt and the pulley fluctuates slightly as it rotates. The linear velocity of the belt is equal to the product of the pulley radius and its angular velocity. So as the radius fluctuates, the belt velocity does too. Since the belt teeth are uniformly spaced, the resulting velocity to ripple is cyclic. For each successive tooth engagement, we see a slight acceleration followed by a deceleration. The frequency of those oscillations is equal to the belt speed divided by the pitch. For a two millimeter pitch belt moving at 100 millimeters per second, that works out to about 50 hertz. And just as it does in the case of type one VFAs, this causes microscopic fluctuations in the effective extrusion weight, manifesting as a repeated pattern on the printed surface. Now the observant amongst you might then be wondering, if the drive pulleys introduce oscillations into the system, wouldn't the idler pulleys do the same? And the short answer is yes, but there's some nuance here. A toothed idler pulley will also introduce some polygon effect oscillations into the system, but to a much lesser degree. The idlers don't transfer torque, they're passive driven by the motion of the belt. So the polygon effect at the drive pulley is the primary cause for velocity variations. But idlers aren't always toothed. Some are smooth, which introduces its own set of problems. The polygon effect isn't at play here. The belt teeth aren't indexed with the pulley at regular intervals. On a smooth pulley, the belt teeth don't mesh at all. They repeatedly grab and release, stick and slip, creating a small transverse or side-to-side -side vibration that travels through the belt. The transverse oscillation becomes a longitudinal or back and forth displacement of the printhead. So the net result is the same as with type 1 VFAs. Velocity variations at the printhead causing microscopic extrusion width fluctuations. You might call these type 3 VFAs or type 2B. They have the same belt pitch spacing as the polygon effect induced VFAs, so you won't be able to tell them apart. Now here's where it gets interesting. The prominence of type 2 and type 3 VFAs dependent on both print speed and belt tension. The print speed determines the rate of tooth engagement, and therefore the excitation frequency, at both the drive pulley and idler pulley. If it matches one of the system's resonant frequencies, which are a function of tension, the amplitude of the resulting oscillations will be maximized. As an analogy, think of a guitar string. As you tension it, the frequency of the note changes. If you pluck the string at that exact frequency, the note will ring out loud. Now the next logical question is, how will these effects combine? If all of the oscillations are transmitting through the belt, what will the net result be? Well, just like how the motor induced vibrations can add or cancel, the effects of the idler and drive pulley oscillations can too. If the oscillations are in phase, in other words, in sync, they'll add constructively, resulting in larger amplitude. If they're out of phase, they'll cancel it. If both sources of vibration start at time zero and have the same frequency, they'd be in phase, but they don't. It takes time for the wave to propagate. And as it happens, the wave speed is also a function of tension. Higher tension, higher speed. Because the waves from the drive pulley and idler pulley travel different distances before reaching the printhead, changing the tension changes the delay between them, which determines whether they add or cancel. This is why belt tension plays such a critical role in the prominence of VFAs. So as you can see, it's quite a complicated topic. We have overlapping vibrational modes, each originating from a different source, all transmitting through the belt and manifesting as a repeated pattern on the surface of our prints. So how can we mitigate this? The first defense is the selection of suitable motors and stepper drivers that act to reduce motor-induced vibrations. Prusa has already done this with the Core 1 by selecting 0.9 degree steppers. The second defense is belt selection. Many newer printers, like this Chidi Q2, are being built with improved belts that have a 1.5 millimeter pitch as opposed to the usual two millimeters. A 1.5 millimeter pitch belt has more teeth engaged around the pulley, so its path is closer to a true circle. As a rough analogy, if two millimeter belts form a hexagon when wrapped around a corresponding pulley, 1.5 millimeter belts would form an octagon. This actually increases the frequency of polygon effect induced vibrations. The tooth engagement frequency is higher, but it reduces their amplitude, usually to the point where the effect is imperceptible on the printed part. The first I've seen to implement this is Chiditech, 
first with their Plus 4 printer, and later with the Q2 Pro. The prints from both of these machines are virtually VFA free. But they're not alone. Bamboo has actually caught on too. They've used these belts on the H2D, and there are virtually no Type 2 VFAs on that printer. But for some reason, they've stuck with the 2mm belts on the P2S, and it shows. And Prusa has two with the Core 1. So how has Prusa managed to miraculously cure the Core 1 of VFAs, if they haven't changed anything about the hardware? Well, the first thing they did is study in detail the optimal belt tension that would mitigate VFAs. The original recommended tension of 85Hz was increased substantially to 98Hz for the top belt and 92Hz for the bottom belt. They also implemented a very clever new method for tuning the tension, employing the stroboscopic effect. Much like a camera shutter can freeze motion or even make things appear to run in reverse, a flashing light can do the same. By exciting the belt at a certain frequency and strobing the lights accordingly, we're able to visualize with the naked eye exactly how it resonates. As we approach the resonant frequency, the belt moves with smooth periodic motion. Away from it, it moves chaotically or not at all. Once we've identified the current belt frequency, we're given a recommendation on how to adjust it. And as I mentioned, the belt tension is a confounding factor in the prominence of VFAs. So setting it just right can help mitigate them. But even with the right tension, the belts will still resonate at certain rates of pulley rotation, as will the motors. Ideally, smooth pulleys would only be used for contact with the backside of the belt, with tooth pulleys used everywhere else. If the tooth side of the belt is to contact a smooth idler, the diameter should be no less than that recommended by the manufacturer, Gates, which is one inch for a 2GT profile. But for some reason, the majority of 3D printer manufacturers ignore this recommendation. Prusa and Bamboo are both guilty of using undersized smooth idlers. So in this case, we defer to our third line of defense, profile tuning. By strategically selecting the print speed ranges in our slicer profiles, we can avoid the resonant frequencies altogether, mitigating vibrations and minimizing VFAs. GD achieves this in their slicer with a setting called resonance avoidance. In the latest version of Prusa Slicer, the Core 1 has an additional profile added, balance. It maintains the high perimeter speed of the speed profile but drops the other speeds to nearer those of the structural profile. In this way, you avoid VFA-inducing speeds to the exterior surfaces, but still achieve good mechanical properties. And, well, it works. There are no perceptible VFAs on the Core 1 when printing with this profile. But this is somewhat restricted. When printing with any other profile, the VFAs are still quite prominent, albeit not as bad as before we achieved the optimal belt tension. In this comparison, you can see the before and after of the factory belt tension versus the newly recommended, much higher belt tension. When tension with the higher values, the VFAs are significantly diminished. This is basically the best we can do without changing the hardware. Further improvements could only be made by replacing the 2mm belt with 1.5mm ones. And my friend Yves from the channel Noisyworks did just that. You can check out his channel at the link in the description to see all of the crazy testing he did with the Core 1 to eliminate VFAs. And I can say from his results, it does look like with the addition of the 1.5mm belt, Core 1 VFAs are gone once and for all. But what about Bamboo's printers? Is there any hope to achieve similar results on the P2S? Well, let's first look at the H2D, which does have 1.5mm belts. I printed two test samples, one with the speed profile and one with what Bamboo calls balanced structural. Unlike Prusa's balanced profile, Bamboo's profile actually drops the perimeter speed considerably. Interestingly, we see virtually no VFAs with these settings. On the other hand, the speed profile, while minimal, does show some VFAs, which vary in their spacing depending on the angle of the surface. Here's your pop quiz. Are these type 1 VFAs or type 2? If you answered type 1, you'd be correct. We don't see any of the type 2 VFAs because the 1.5mm belts effectively eliminate them. What we're seeing here are motor resonance induced. The P1S with 2mm belts seems to have the opposite problem. I'm not seeing significant type 1 VFAs. The straight edges are very clean, but there is a prominent pattern on evenly spaced increments on the 45 degree angle. The problem with any of these bamboo printers is that we don't have manual control of belt tension. They use a spring-loaded auto belt tensioning system, so we can't fine tune the tension for VFA minimizing performance. We can, however, do what Prusa has done and develop profiles that explicitly avoid these speed ranges. The question is, why hasn't Bamboo done this already? And why did they intentionally use 2mm belts 
on the second generation P2S when they were well aware that 1.5 mm belts are superior. Perhaps it was cost savings, or perhaps they wanted to differentiate the print quality of the lower end P2S from the forthcoming flagship X2C. Hmm, I guess we'll just have to wait and see, but I think it will be very revealing if the X2C is announced and it does inherit those 1.5 mm belts from the H2D. In the meantime, I hope Bamboo can do something in software space to build better profiles, as Prusa has done. In an industry that thrives on collaboration and frankly copycats, I hope more companies can catch on to what is now a foregone conclusion. 1.5 millimeter belts are just superior and adopt them in all future printers. But I'd love to know what you think. Did this video change your perspective on VFAs? And did you learn anything? I hope you did. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing. Thank you.